Today is the lecture for European history for the 26th of May, 2021. This is a Wednesday. Yesterday we covered much of the final solution. We talked about the Vance conference, which planned the final solution to the Jewish question. We talked about the gas vans of Kelno death camp, where they routed the exhaust of an um, internal combustion engine into the cargo um, compartment where the Jews were and all of the various engineering problems that had to be solved for that. We talked about the application of the insecticide Zyklon B to exterminate Jews and others, and how the uh, perfectly um, pure death camp was established at Treblinka for that purpose. We then referenced Auschwitz, and Auschwitz is sort of like the New York City of death camps. It's not just a death camp. It's so many other things. It's a concentration camp where doctors like Josef Mengele could perform experiments on people. Uh, his favorite were twins, to use one twin as a control group and the other twin as the experimental group. Or he would test both as the experimental group, but using somewhat different experiments. Um, by no means was he the only one. The IG Farben Chemical Company set up a purpose-built production facility at Auschwitz, Auschwitz-Birkenau, because um, you don't have to worry too much about safety. I mean, the concentration camp victims are disposable. You use them for a while, they die, you get more, you use more. And you save on, on, on the kind of safety measures that namby-pamby people who want to live uh, demand and that governments that care for their people demand. But in this case, the IG Farm and Chemical Company, which I, I believe still exists, um, used, uh, partnered with the Auschwitz Commandant, Commandant Hurst, uh, to make a for-profit chemical plant. So... Auschwitz was a concentration camp where medical experiments were done. It was a labor camp. It was also a death camp. Trains would arrive. Men and women would be separated. People that were chosen for special duty would be pulled out of line. Sometimes, just randomly, a child would be saved while their mother would go, or a mother would be saved while a child would go. One man would be saved, another man wouldn't. Saved as in assigned to the Zonderkommandos as slave labor in one way or another. And those who didn't were brought into a queue which had them stripped down and head into the largest shower facilities in the Reich. And these shower facilities had Cyclone B gas emanating. And they, unlike Treblinka, which had fairly small gas chambers, Auschwitz-Birkenau, had huge ones. Hundreds of Jews could be gassed simultaneously. It was the most um, large-scale assembly line of death that existed. And uh, as at Treblinka, they would then go to the ovens to be burned. Now, at some death camps, the bodies were buried uh, as if there was no fear that anyone would ever know. But when the side turned on the Eastern Front and the Russian army moved westward, the SS actually went through the trouble of digging up the bodies and burning them or digging them up and covering them with lye and then trying to bury them better, all to try to hide the enormity of their crime. Um, they were so eager that uh, as Russian troops approached, rather than let liberation occur, they would often take the Jews and march them deeper into the Reich, sometimes in the height of the winter of 1944-45. So the Jews were um, visited with one last death march, which many of them didn't survive. Abraham Bamba, a man known as uh, one of the barbers of Treblinka, survived the war. He is from Czestochowa, in Czechoslovakia. And in the 1970s, Claude Lanzmann, a French filmmaker, made a movie called Shoah, 
Shoah is, again, the annihilation. It's about six hours long. I saw it start to finish once in college, and I've seen it a couple of times since. Shoah is not a typical movie about the Holocaust. It doesn't have newsreel footage of piles of bodies being bulldozed, of human corpses stacked like cordwood, and of the skulls of people who weren't properly burned. All it is is interviews. And Lanzmann interviews everyone he can find, from survivors to Polish farmers to politicians and historians, philosophers, concentration camp guards, even an officer or two he tricks into giving testimony on camera. And one of the people he interviewed on several occasions was Abraham Bamba. Please get the lights. So what I'm going to do is he's interviewed in two parts. The first day he is interviewed in his Tel Aviv apartment where he sits on the uh, balcony and talks. The next day he goes to a friend's barber shop and he gets behind a chair because this will help him to think and talk about these these horrible things that nobody ever would want to recount. Um, so. I'll be playing those and perhaps something else.